Hello and welcome to Off the Beaten Pot, bringing great food back to the great outdoors. My name is Tom and today I am fucking excited. So today I'm very excited because I'm learning how to forage food. I'm learning how to forage food with my friend, Stuart. So Stuart's going to show us how to well, I don't know, what, what, what is the plan today? We're going well, to cook something. We're obviously wandering around today. We're working up an appetite. We'll be foraging lots of things. Perfect time for foraging, middle of summer. Uh, lots of great stuff around. And what's great about this collaboration is that I've got some ingredients, but it feels weird because I don't have enough in my backpack to complete or even closely complete the meal. Um, certainly not the important bits. So between us, we're going to come up with a meal. And what's on the menu today? So we're going to have um, an orzotto. So risotto Ooh. cooked with orzo pasta. It's a lot quicker to cook than a full blown risotto. Saves on your water. Yep, saves on your water, saves on your fuel, uh, but just as delicious. We're going to find some wild greens to go in that. Also some wild herbs, um, one of which we're going to show you in just a sec. We're also going to find some um, fruits. So we've got bilberries, which are wild blueberries and wild strawberries. And I've also found some uh, wild cherries, some bird cherries this morning. And uh, yeah, we're going to cook some little sort of scotch pancakes and drop scones on the trander in the little fry pan. Scones. Scones. Yeah. <laughs> Here, we've got some wild thyme. Now, obviously thyme you find you know, in the supermarket. Here we're finding it growing in the wild. It's the same type of flavour, but it's slightly shorter and scrubbier. And you can see this gorgeous... Um, purple flowers that I've got here are really aromatic. So what I'm going to do is just pick some of that and, oh wow, you won't be able to smell this at home, but if you crush that up and have a waft of that, Tom will be able to. I uh, could actually smell it as soon as you picked yeah. it, it broke something. Just the yeah. sun on those plants, you know, really, really aromatic. That's going to just take our orzotto to another level, I think. There's plenty of it here, so we're not going to take all of this, obviously. We're just going to take enough for what we need to cook today leave some for somebody else to forage, leave some for the bees to, to pollinate. Uh, and yeah, jobs are good. So we're walking down this track here, lots of greenery around us. And just whilst we've been walking, and I've been walking behind Tom, just keeping my eyes open for a few things, and I've spotted some sorrel, some common sorrel, which is a lovely, uh, ingredient to use really sort of lemony fresh uh, the best way I can describe it is like sharp apple peel in flavor really sort of mouth watering and we've got a nice patch of it just down here so what we're looking for here are these lovely leaves nice fresh vibrant green color and we can also pick the stem as well and what you're looking for with sorrel is the backward facing sharply pointed lobes and if you flatten that out you can just sort of see there that's got a sharp point to it and the reason that I talk about it being sharply pointed is to avoid confusion with another plant called lords and ladies which won't kill you but will give you a nasty sort of burning sensation if you ate it but what we're really interested in once we've identified it correctly is the flavor and the best way to describe that and show you is to munch on it oh, so good really really mouth-watering really really fresh it's around for quite a lot of the year as well, which is also great. Not just in the summer, you'll get this in spring and also in, in Cornwall, we'll get that pretty much all year round. Where are the bilberries? You've got heather here, you've got ferns. Just in the understory, underneath the ferns, we've got our bilberries here. So as you can see, here's the bilberry leaf and there is a little bilberry. And another one there, and another one there, and some more up here. And once you get your eye in, even though they're tiny, they pack a lovely flavour. Here are our bilberries. We've got lots more that we're going to be picking in a minute. But first off, me and Tom are going to scoff a couple of these. Slightly more tart than, yeah. than sort of shop-bought blueberries, but... But again, used in moderation, that would pack yeah. an absolute flavourful punch to yeah. whatever you're doing. Like, just a few of those in your breakfast in the morning would spread out well. <laughs> So we've had a lovely walk. We've picked up loads along the way. Um, really excited about the risotto. So 
Where's the pasta? We left the pasta. And this is um, a good point. Sometimes, sometimes it happens or sometimes your food can spoil. But luckily we came out with more than one thing to eat. So what's for lunch? Well, we've got our wild strawberries and all the sorts of stuff for the pancakes, which is good. We do have, as well as our wild greens, we do have a, a parasol mushroom that I foraged yesterday. So I guess we could have some fried mushrooms and herbs. Very light lunch. But yeah, that's all the stuff that we got today. The bilberries and the wild strawberries, which we're both pretty excited about. And then we just got some eggs and some flour, uh, some powdered milk rather. Yeah, two types of powdered milk. Um, we've got powdered cow's milk and powdered coconut milk. And some maple sugar, which I'm very excited about. Mm. And we've just got some coconut oil here um, for cooking that in. So uh, yeah, should we get cooking? We've got our sorrel and our wild thyme there. Thyme and mushrooms, great combination. Uh, and we've got our nettles. And obviously you could chop all of this, or a lot of it you can just tear by hand, which is quite a, a nice rustic way of doing things. Obviously with the stinging nettles, tearing by hand, you don't want to be tearing them if they're uh, fresh nettles that might be stinging you, but I say they're wilted away quite, quite a lot in the sun today. Although we're not having the risotto that we'd like, um, yeah, because, because we've foraged, we can still eat, which is yeah. incredible. Incredible news to me anyway, because I'm starving. Um, so we've got this lovely mushroom, which we're gonna fry up and still get to use some of our ingredients. So in this tub, I've got um, dehydrated courgettes, a dried chili, fresh garlic, and dried onion flakes. So we can still use these with the mushroom. This is a non-stick pan, but we are going to add oil for a couple of reasons. One, flavor and calories. We've burnt quite a few today. But also, when we put our dried vegetable in, it's going to soak up moisture from wherever it can. Um, so we'll, we'll get it, start off by frying it in the oil, and then we'll add a bit of water. You can do it the other way around, put a bit of water in and start cooking the dried vegetables that way. Then they just start to take in the moisture and then you cook them as normal when they're, when they're taking on a bit of moisture. And that's the great thing with forage ingredients. We're not, we're not in a survival mode. We're not only subsisting off the, the wild greens that we forage and the, and the berries. It's just another ingredient. The foraging element for me, I always just say to people, it's just another ingredient. It's just another bit in your armory of things that you can use to make a really tasty meal. Oh, it smells so good again, like just the, the fresh garlic. So how would you do this, like watching me do it? Is there anything you're I'd, cringing no, at? No, or? I'd, no I'd, I'd just be the same as, as you, I think. So to get the base flavour from the onions and the garlic. So get that oil flavoured up with, with those ingredients. Then get the mushrooms until they're sort of slightly browning. Just get some of that flavour into the mushrooms as well. They'll they'll soak up a lot of the of the, the flavoured oil. And then, yeah, we're going to finish it off with um, with the herbs at the end. The sort of herbs and the and the nettles and the sorrel. Right, I reckon we might be ready for the foraged element here with the herbs and the sorrel and the nettles. Amazing, so sorrel, nettles, uh, is there anything else that we put uh, going Wild thyme moment? as well, we've got the wild thyme. I usually spend my time looking up when I'm out, but it actually pays to look down because we've got quite a feast here. Yeah, definitely. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, not bad. That's remarkable. Mm. How would you change it if you could? Mm, I'd probably add some orzo pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got a really good hit of sorrel a second ago there. So mm. the flavours are working really nicely. Yeah, and it's very well balanced. And you mm. can taste everything in it. Mm. So we've got our strawberries and bilberries in there. We've got our eggs and our flour and maple sugar. So I guess we just mix up a little batter, fry it in some coconut oil, make some little um, mini pancakes. So if you didn't have coconut milk, would you be using the same ratio here? Or are you just, just playing, doing I'm it by just winging it, really. <laughs> yeah, and it's important that, to know that people can get away with winging it. Yeah. Well. So as it stands at the moment, Ooh. that's just powdered milk. And a bit of moss. 
bit of moss <laughs> and one egg. Yeah. And we'll probably have a little bit of water to perhaps add a bit more liquid if we need, or we could have the other egg. Yeah, without having weighed things out, it's just looking for that by eye, really, that consistency that we want. And another thing we can try mm -hmm. is turning this maple sugar into maple syrup. Okay. Have so you've we... not tried this before? No. Huh? No. I just assumed. So, this was a meanwhile. We can let this cool down. So what happens next with the pancakes? Well, really, all we're going to do is put some coconut oil in that uh, other pan. Once that's hot, we're going to drop in some uh, some batter. Quite a bit. Just whilst the top of that is still soft. When you sort of get bubbles on the top, that's when you know you can flip your pancake. And here's the moment of truth. Ready? Quick flip. Yes. That's a pretty good colour on the bottom. Not too burnt. Nicely golden brown. I only got maple syrup to go with it. What I love about in the outdoors, presentation is never the important bit. No. It's never how fancy it looks on the plate, even though those pancakes are slightly messy, broken. We just know that they're going to taste really good. <laughs> My God, that is good. I can't quite, <laughs> I can't quite believe that came out of packet. <laughs> so using the leftover maple syrup, we filled that, boiled the water, put it through my espresso machine, and now we're having maple coffee espressos for what has been one of the best outdoor meals I've had in my life. So thank you very much to Stuart, and I've been off the beaten pot. Cheers and gone.